Notice verse 5. I want you to notice that the devil comes and the Bible says a few of these kinds of weapons that he comes with. First of all, it says that he comes with arguments. Now, in the original, the word there for arguments is actually the word for reasonings and kind of deliberations. In other words, the devil comes to you with well-prepared, logical-sounding arguments. I mean, what, what did he say? In Genesis chapter 3, what kind of lie, what kind of logical argument did he actually bring? I mean, he said, I mean, did God really say you shall not eat of every fruit in the garden? I mean, what kind of argument did he bring in Matthew chapter 4 verse 3 to Jesus as he was fasting? He says, I mean, if, if you're the son of God, just command that these stones be turned into bread. It's logical sounding arguments, but... It's based on lies. So one of the weapons that the devil comes with are these logical sounding arguments, these lies. The Bible says he also comes with these opinions and thoughts. And by the way, the word there for thoughts in the original, it's the same word that's used in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4. I want you to notice this. Where it says, the God of this age has blinded the minds. So it's the word for thoughts in the original. Has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. So what is it that the devil is trying to do by introducing these logical sounding arguments, these opinions and these thoughts? What is it that he's trying to do? He's trying to blind people with his lies. He's trying to blind you with his lies. And so, look, I mean, what's the inevitable result of the, devil, of the devil slinging these weapons in your direction? What's the inevitable result, according to the Bible, of us just passively being attacked and not being on alert? I want you to notice that the Bible says that the devil sets up a fortress in your mind. A fortress. Anybody know what a fortress actually is? A, a fortress is... An extreme defensive position. Weapons that are inside of the fortress. And it's built in such a way that it's made to be completely... You cannot go into a fortress. You cannot knock it down. So listen to me. The Bible is saying that as a result of the devil's argumentations, as a result of his logical sounding opinions, he is seeking to establish a fortress, a stronghold in your life. That's the bad news. Some of y'all don't know that the devil has been seeking to plant a stronghold in your mind. And guess what? Once you have that stronghold there, the devil has claimed that territory. He's saying, this is mine. <laughs> Good luck, y'all. This, this territory here, where this stronghold, where this fortress is placed, all of this belongs to me. Good luck. You're not going to be able to overtake this stronghold. I'm just telling you the truth. That's what the Bible says. The devil's strategy is to build up this stronghold, this fortress in your life. So, okay, so what should we do? I mean, do we just give up and give in? Because it's like, well, I guess it's a pretty powerful stronghold. I guess that's it for me. Absolutely not. God's strategy, I want you to see this. What is the strategy of God? What is the strategy of God's people? Number one, we take an offensive stance. Listen, I want you to notice the kind of stance that the Bible is talking about and the manner in which these strongholds are being described. So the strongholds of the devil in your mind, they must and can be destroyed through the power of Jesus. The these lies and arguments of the devil, according to the Bible, they must and can be destroyed. Is it because you're so good at battle? Is it because you're just that strong? No, you're not strong enough, trust me. In fact, the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 that we do not go in our own power and in our own strength. The Bible says here that we, there is divine power to demolish these strongholds. In Ephesians chapter 6, it says that we go into battle armored. Not in your own armor. Sorry, it's not good enough. We go in the armor of God. That's 
how these strongholds can be overcome in the name of Jesus. So number one, God's strategy, you take an offensive stance. Because the devil can't stand against the armies of the Lord. The devil can't stand against the power of Jesus Christ. For every, enemy, for every angel of the enemy, there's two of God's. He's outnumbered. So if you come in the power of Jesus, there's no stronghold that can stand. So number one, you take an offensive strategy. And I, notice, I want you to notice what the Bible says at the end of verse 5. It says we are to take every thought captive to obey Christ. I want you to notice that when the Apostle Paul is writing this, he's using hardcore military language. I mean, this is not docile. This is not soft kind of language. I mean, this is, you know, this is like we are in war. He says we take every thought. What do we do with it? What do we do with it? You take that thing captive. What does it mean to take something captive? It means that you have overcome the enemy, and when you take them captive, you are taking prisoners of war now. You arrest them. So the Bible is saying, and this is part of God's strategy on how we can conquer the battle within our minds, is that we are to take every thought captive. And what this means is that we take dominance and control over the thoughts that are seeking to get into our minds. 